your own agenda as a child of God to be at the forefront, you deploy the weapon of the supernatural. You must be very prayerful. You carry all your weapons, the weapons of our warfare, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, the belt of truth, the helmet of salvation, all the weapons that Paul described in Ephesians, you carry those weapons, you are waging war. As you are studying, you are reading, you are hard working, you are waging war. You are waging war because the devil will not fold his hands and allow any child of God to prosper. <laughs> You know what it means if one billion dollars enter your hand today and you're a child of God and you're God's dead. You will give money to people who are in trouble. You will promote crusades. You will buy properties for churches. And when you are solving problems for people, you are going to be affecting Satan's kingdom. Satan wants people to be in pain. You are paying their tuition fees. They are not in pain. So you become the devil's arch enemy. <laughs> Satan wants marriages to split. Now you are setting up marriage seminar, funding marriage teachers, and giving them money. And you are making their war up to blossom. And they have no energy to do more seminars that save marriages. Satan will be hungry. Because the Bible says in John chapter 10, verse 10, the thief comes from God to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So when you are working against his stealing ministry, working against his destruction ministry, you're going to be an archive. So that is why he fights the church financially. Satan fight the church financially. Satan attacks two principal parts, two principal areas of the church. He attacks marriages and finances. Satan's two principal weapons, marriage crisis, financial problem. And you see what is going on all over the world with believers' marriages splitting, pastors' marriages splitting because you know that if you can deal with them in those two areas, their mind will not be at rest. When you are battling financial problem, battling marital problem, you won't focus on prayer. You won't be able to pray. So God is speaking to us this morning that in these last days, the supernatural is compulsory. It's a compulsory cause. I have a PhD. I have an MS. I know this person. I know that person. These things can fail. The Bible says Jesus did not commit himself to any man. Because he knew what was in men. Don't put your trust in my uncle, my brother, my degree, my, my certificate. No. Put your trust in God. Now, there are different types of work that you must be prepared to do in fitting yourself on the line of God's supernatural provision. That is what I call the right work. Make sure you are doing the right work. Make sure you are committed to the right career, right job, right work. So, because whenever Satan wants to punish people financially, he divert their attention to wrong work, wrong career, that will waste their time. There is what is called hard work. You must be diligent in that right work. That is hard work. After hard work, we have smart work. Smart work. That comes on the wings of divine ideas, creativity. Doing something little that will get to big results. Writing a program. Submitting a proposal and the whole world is looking for you. Putting a product on Amazon before you blink, one million people are buying that product. That is smart work. And this comes by the wisdom of God. All of this comes by the supernatural help of the Holy Spirit. There is what is called enduring work. No, your work is the right work. It's, you are doing it in diligent way. That is hard work. You are smart at the work. But is the work enduring? Will it last? Three years after, four years after, ten years after, are you going to still be committed to doing the same thing and getting the same results? And then we have glorifying work. Is that work glorifying God? So you don't expect the supernatural wind of provision to follow a man who is doing a work that is affecting the kingdom of God negatively. No, it's not going to happen. Your work must glorify God. So make sure your work is glorified. I want the wind of supernatural. I want God to blow resources. I want God to make me wealthy. What is the purpose of that wealth? Is it to glorify yourself or to glorify God? God is not giving supernatural provision to people who want to become reservoirs. Jesus said, do not lay up treasure on the earth where moth and rust corrupt, but lay up treasure in heaven. Jesus did not say, do not have treasures. He did not say, do not have money. He said, do not lay it up. What does that word mean? Don't be a reservoir. 